Hi everybody, welcome to class. My name is Nikki and I will be your painting instructor today. I am here at the Painting at Splash uh, studio in downtown New Bedford and we are excited to offer you guys some virtual at home classes uh, to do uh, during this time. So today we're getting started uh, with our beautiful painting right here of two lovely fishes. Um, this is a great painting for um, young kids and anybody. Um, very, very um, easy to do and lots of fun, most importantly. So, starting off our, our classes, we just want to go over some, some things for you guys to consider at home before we get started on materials and things that you may have and how to set up. So, first having your, your canvas ready at a vertical position, so not horizontal, so at a vertical. And then you can have it on flat on your desk if you don't have an easel. Now everybody has an easel, or you can prop it up. Sometimes people will put something behind their, their easel to prop it up, to hold it up. Okay, and then maybe something in front of it on the bottom so it doesn't slide forward. So other than that, um, hopefully at home you have some brushes that you can use. I have three different types of brushes here, but at home you may only have one or, or two or just a different type of brush. So always just make do with what, what you have. I have here a big brush, a medium brush, and my detail brush. So, just uh, keep in mind that if you don't have this detail brush um, for certain small things, I'll, I'll help you use uh, something else, like um, if you have toothpicks at home or um, Q-tips, or even the back of your brush can help with getting really small details in. Okay? So other than your, your, your brushes, you should have your cup of water, Okay, so for rinsing out your brushes in, you should have your palette of paint. So your paint can be on like a, a plastic plate or if you have um, an old egg carton uh, that you can pour the paint in that the eggs are already done or um, anything in your um, recycling bin, um, a piece of cardboard or really, really anything that you're okay with getting paint on. And today we're going to have just our basic colors, so always want to work with our basic colors um, and we will make other colors from them. So red, yellow, blue, white, and black. From there, we want to make sure that we have some paper towels uh, nearby that we can dry our brushes off on when we get them wet. And also just to catch any drips that may happen um, we want to make sure that we put plastic underneath of our, um, our canvases on the table or, or a towel. Um, anything that uh, we're, we're okay with getting paint on um, so that way you don't get it on your, your table. Or if you're okay getting it on, on your table, that's, that's fine too. Speaking of getting paint on things, um, so as you can see here at our studio, we get paint on things. It's, it's inevitable. Not, not this much uh, happens in one sitting. It takes years and years to get um, this much uh, uh, paint that may happen on you and I. I love um, getting paint on my apron, but not on my clothes. So with that, uh, you want to make sure that you're wearing something that you're okay if something if paint gets on you. That can be an old t-shirt, um, or if you do have an apron at home, uh, just anything that is paint friendly, okay? And it might be nice to have just to um, encourage yourself to do more painting to know that you, you have all of your materials, including your, um, your, your paint shirt or your, your paint apron. So, but also before we get started today, I want to um, just tell you a little bit about how our classes work here in terms of time. So our class will be about an hour to an hour and a half today. Now when we're in our studios here doing class, it typically lasts two hours. And 
why that is is we we pause and we work on things that we may be having trouble with or we need some time to to do something a little bit longer time and so the great thing about having this video at home is you can hit pause at any time so um, i'm going to continue going step by step um, where i may uh, in the studio may pause a lot more but at home, you can do that pause by hitting pause, okay? So, also, when I take you in this direction today for doing the, the awesome fish in the sea, if you want to do different colors, um, or if you want to draw them in a different way, absolutely. I'm a big uh, um, supporter in my classes for our students to have um, creative choices so to, to choose to do things differently is totally cool. So you can always take out of the painting things you don't want there, or you can always add to the painting things that you do want there too. All right, we're gonna get started. So before we get our fish and our seaweed in, we need our water in. So the whole background is with blue. But we don't need it to be like a solid blue. We want it to have a lot of, like a water quality. And that water quality with the blue paint is by adding water. So before we get ahead of ourselves, let's get our big brush ready. So at home, if you have a brush that is um, your biggest of your brushes, that will be the brush that we need because we need to cover this whole canvas with blue. All right, we are going to dip our brush in the blue, so not up and down, but left and right. So it really gets nice and full. And then here's the trick. You're gonna dip your brush in your cup of water just once. And then you're gonna start at the top and fill up your canvas with blue, but before you fill up your brush with more blue, you're gonna dip your brush in the water again and spread that blue out that you added. And what, what that does is it starts to thin the blue out so it starts to look a little bit more like water. See how I'm adding the water? to the blue and it's filling up more space because the water is thinning out the blue and spreading it out more. So this way you don't have to use as much of your blue paint, but also it just helps for getting a water-like quality to our, our painting. By adding water, getting water to add water. And feel free to allow your brush to do all types of movements. This is water, so water can move in, in circles or in waves. You can do all types of movements along your background. Okay. So, but at a certain point, you may need to fill up your brush again. I think I'm about ready to fill up my brush again. So when you do, just Fill it up again with more blue. Dip it in your cup of water. And continue working your way down. But see how like I can't really push the paint around anymore because I don't have any more water. So I'm gonna dip my brush in the water. Go over top of those blue areas and spread it out. Starting to look like water. Keep on dipping that brush in your water. Go over top of the blue and spread it out. All over your canvas. Right. 
I'm about at that point again where I'm going to need to fill up my, my brush with more water, I'm sorry, with more paint. So I can tell when I'm getting really, really light and, it's, and, I, and I want a little bit more blue. So dipping my brush one last time in my blue, dipping it in my cup of water, and then finishing up my, my canvas. Water is moving everywhere. Okay, so once you finish all, all up, you can just take your brush and just go all over your canvas. One last time to just spread out that paint, spread out the water, create the brush strokes that help create the water-like look just by going left and right, left and right, all over. It's like the water is churning. The water is moving. And lots of water. When you finish that, you can leave your big brush in your cup of water. I'm going to just bring this up to you so you can see a little bit closer how I finished my canvas. So your canvas should be all over finished with blue and notice how <coughs> thin some of the paint is. <coughs> so when you add the water, it starts to thin out some of the areas. And, and that helps to create the water-like look. And then by taking your brush and going all over with it, that's like the water moving. <coughs> so I've been doing this for a long time, so I may be going a lot faster than what you're doing. And so like how I started off class today by saying that the great thing about our virtual um, classes is your ability to hit pause whenever you're still working on something. In class, we would just pause together and I would walk around and see everybody's uh, paintings and help you out if you needed help. But at home, you're gonna probably now hit pause if you're not yet done and then come join me next for the next step whenever you finished with your, your background, okay? Right. So I'm going to head on to the, the next step now. So one, once you're, you're ready to, to join me, hit play. All right. So the next step that we're doing now is we're going to get in a bright orange fish. But we need to make our bright orange. So if you will, with your medium brush, or whatever is, um, if you only have one size large brush at, at home, that's okay too. So either a medium or whatever you can get that's closest to the size um, will be best. And we're gonna make orange on our palette by what colors? Yellow and red. So we want a lighter color orange. So we want to work um, mostly with our, our yellow with just a little bit of red. We don't want to use all of our yellow, so I'm going to pull a little bit of my yellow aside. You can always add more yellow to your palette at home if you have more paint. So I pulled a little bit of yellow off to the side, and now with my rest of my yellow, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of red. Just a little. You can always add more. And then I'm going to mix that into my big pile of yellow to create my orange. Mm. 
looks like a good orange to me. So your orange may be brighter, maybe more red. Your orange may be more yellow, okay? And that's totally okay, as long as it's the color orange that you like and would like to do for your fish. So no right or wrong. Once you have that, that color of the orange, we're gonna to start to get the shape of our fish in. And we're gonna do the shape of this fish here, just the body of this fish, not the fins or the eyes, just the, the body of it with um, two different types of shapes. So to use our brush, let's also talk about how we hold our brush. We wanna hold our brush close up towards our bristles so we don't want to hold back here. And also when we're doing um, the outlining of something, we want to use what is called short brush stroke. Least amount of bristles in one direction creates a smaller brush stroke. Big brush stroke, when I hold my brush the other way, creates a bigger mark. So the bigger mark is great for filling things in, and the smaller mark is great for creating an outline of a shape. And that's the one we want to start with. So we're going to outline the shape of our fish here. And so I may at times be in front of my, my canvas to do it like so, and then I'll turn around and I'll, and I'll show you. We're going to work on the top left hand corner. We want to leave room at the top for eyes and seaweed and on the left for a fin. So just make sure that within your top left hand corner you have some space around. And the first shape we're going to do is this oval-like shape. Okay? So an oval-like shape that has like a teardrop to it. So oval-like shape with a teardrop. I'll show you more once I finish it on my palette. teardrop there. So creating like a circle, but then like an upside down teardrop. Okay, so it comes to a point there. Right? Also just make sure that your, your background, your blue is nice and dry before you start to paint over. Otherwise, the orange and the blue will mix and create a green-like color. So just make sure also that you take your time um, you can pause again that if you, if you notice that your background is a little bit wet. If you have a hair dryer at home, uh, you can blow dry the canvas to dry it and then come join me back uh, again. But that's very important to make sure that the background is, is dry. Okay. So after you get that shape in, then we're going to get our tail that's coming in. And the tail, um, you're probably gonna have to fill up your, your brush with more paint, more of that orange. And it's gonna come across the right side here and it's gonna curve in just slightly off of that circle area. So here now we're coming into here and we're gonna curve out for our tail on both sides. So watch how like on my left side here, off of my point, I'm curving down and out for my tail, on the other side, curving down and out for my tail. I'll bring that up to you so you can see as well. So off of that circle with the teardrop point, I'm coming off of the right hand side with a curve coming out for my tail, and on the left hand side, curving and coming out for my tail, and then I'm going to create that the connection at the bottom with a little bit of a wave. So with your brush off of the, the bottom portion here, you can create a little bit of a wave for your tail. 
see. Nice little wave for your tail there. All right. So we have our, our fish-like uh, shape, and then we're going to paint this all in with the orange. So filling in the whole fish with the paint. And when we're filling in or coloring in things, it might be nice now to turn on some music. Since we're just taking our time to fill in something. Here at the studio at Splash and Classes, we'll oftentimes like turn on some fun music and, and play and just have a good time. Now I don't have music playing on here right now so you can hear my voice, but maybe at home you have a, a way to play some music. So while we're filling in our, our fish here, maybe turning up the music, playing your favorite song, and filling in that fish. in a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red into our fish so it has that fiery like look to it. So this is before we add the dots and the lines. So after you fill it in with uh, some orange and it's totally okay if you still see some of the the blue under underneath of the fish. See how I see some of my blue here? That's totally okay. I actually kind of like it. But we're gonna uh, don't need to rinse off your brush, just add a little bit of yellow to your brush and start to fill in just with a little bit of streaks of yellow. Into the body of your fish. Oh, I like that. I like that addition to the fish color. Do any of you at home have fish? I don't think I've ever owned a fish. I love seeing fish though. don't need to rinse off your brush, but when you finish adding that sweeping little bit of yellow, we're going to add a little bit of red. Now red is a darker color, so it can take over things really quickly. So start off with just a little bit on your brush, and you could always add more. So you don't need to rinse off your brush, just add a little, little tiny bit of red. See how you can barely see it on the bottom of my brush. If you add it too much, just tap it out on your palette. Now I'll take a little bit off. 
and then come and just wherever you'd like, start to sweep in a little bit of red. And this is all over the fish, wherever you'd like. And if you end up adding a little bit too much red to your fish, if to you it seems like too much red, you can always pick up some more yellow and just add in some yellow. You don't need to rinse off your brush. So now is the time to just play with adding in as much yellow, orange, red to your, your fish until you get the exact amount of color that you would like in the body of your fish. And you don't have to add the red everywhere too. Like maybe I'm only going to put just a little bit down here by my feet of my, my fish's fin, but not do too much um, above it. And that's just personal choice of where you would like to add your, your colors. In all of my classes, I really love to see everybody's choices of what they choose to do, of putting more or less color or a different color into their paintings. I find it very fun. Okay. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I hope you are too. So, we're going to allow that fish to dry uh, a bit before we put on the lines and the, and the dots and the eyes. But I think we can do our, our fins. So, if you're not yet finished with the body of your, your fish, you can pause the video now and, and finish that up. And then when you're, you're ready to do the fins, come and press play again and, and join me on in. I'm going to head on into that next step. And to do that, we're going to rinse off our medium brush, but we're not actually going to use our medium brush. Now, if you have a really small brush at home, that's going to be the brush that we want to use. If the brush that you've been using thus far is your only brush, then we'll make do. That's okay. So I'm transitioning now to this brush, my smallest brush. So whatever is your smallest brush, and we're going to add a little bit of white to a little bit of yellow on our palette. So it's now a light, light yellow. Make it as light or as dark as you'd like. Remember, no right or wrongs. And we're going to come off doing those fins. So the fin on our right hand side is down here. And we're going to curve off the top. Okay, nice little curve there. And then curving from the bottom out to that point. Okay, so curving down with our fit. And then we're going to fill that all in. So with your light yellow, filling in that fin. to have a little bit more yellow or a little bit more white just like how we did with our body make those artistic choices all right we're on the top side of the fin so we're going to angle from the bottom fin top of the body 
And that's where our other fin will be, because our body is like twisted here. So coming off the top left hand side, we're going to curve out and down for our fin. Okay. And then coming out from the body again, a little bit lower, coming out and down and connecting. Okay. Now let's fill that in. touches the body, you can actually take that color, the yellow on your brush, and bring it onto the body of the fish a little bit. And that can help um, make it look a little bit more like it's part of the body of the fish and less sort of like this separate shape attached to the fish. Make it look a little bit more like it's supposed to be there. Our fish is coming along. So take your time. If you want to add um, some more yellow or some more white to the uh, body of your fish or to your fins, take your time to do that now. I'm putting a little bit on here on the top of my fish from my fin, from my fins color. Fun. Play around with the paint. Add add colors you 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 like. Okay. Make this something that feels like a fish that you would love to have at home. And once you finish with your fins, we're going to get ready and start on our second fish. So if you still have some more adjustments you want to make with your um, fish here, take your time, hit pause, and then come join me when you're ready to get started on your second fish. All right, so if you're, you're ready, what we're gonna do is we're gonna rinse off our detail brush, and we're gonna get back to that medium brush again that we were working with before. So when you're rinsing off your, your brush, just make sure that you're tapping it on the bottom of your, your cup to work out all of that paint. Sometimes the paint doesn't come off very well if you swish it in the center. You have to tap, 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 tap on the bottom of your cup to work it out. And then if you tap it on your paper towel, and you'll get that water out. Okay. Just make sure that you have your, your brush all ready before we start to get the color ready for making our pink fish. We want a nice bright pink fish. And to do that, we're gonna use white and red. So you don't wanna use um, too much red. You wanna use mostly white. So taking a nice big scoop of, of red and then a nice big scoop of white, probably two times the amount of white to red. So if you have one scoop of red, then do two scoops of white. And we want about um, the amount of like a quarter size to be able to fill in our fish. So using your medium brush on your palette to mix that red and white together and when you, when you finish making your color, if you want it to be a darker pink, you add more red. If you want it to be a lighter pink, you can add more white. So know that like our colors 
it may not be exactly the same. Actually, they probably won't. Because unless we, uh, I made your paint for you, you probably aren't having the exact amount of red and white that I am. And that's totally okay. I love it. Look at here, like even my colors of my fish this time versus last time is that I'm, I have a little bit more yellow in my fish this time versus over here I have a little bit more orange. But I like that. I like that. Okay. So you have your pink ready. You have your medium brush ready. And we're going to start on our fish on the right in the same way that we started our fish on the left. So in that same shape and same style where we're using the short brush stroke, least amount of bristles in one direction creates a um, smaller line versus big brush stroke. All bristles in one direction creates a thicker line. And that's what we use for filling in things. So using that short brush stroke, we're going to start with our fish on the right by making that oval top and the teardrop bottom, but the teardrop bottom is now on the right hand side. Versus for our, our left hand fish, it was on the left hand side. So it'll make better sense once I do it and show you. So maybe wait just a second while I do it. There we go. So you can see here that same shape, but the teardrop is on the right hand side. So your oval is going to start up on the right hand side to the right side of your fin of the left hand fish. You're going to do a circle like shape, but then this teardrop coming off of the bottom right hand side. So take your time, pause if you need to pause. And then we're going to start by getting that fin coming off the bottom the same way we did on the other side. So we're going to start off by coming along the left hand side of the fish. We're going to curve down nice and long and out. Yeah, nice big tail there. And on the right hand side we're going to curve down as well and curve out. Mmm, I love that pink. Let's get that um, wavy bottom connecting the tail. Cool. So I'll hold this up in front of you again so you can see. So our curved line on the right came down and out for the tail. Curved line on the left curved in off the side and out for our tail. So you may want to pause there for a, a second to just get that shape in. Do your little ripples on the bottom for the bottom of your tail. And then once you're all uh, done with getting your, your shape in, we're going to fill in that whole fish with your paint with our, our same brush. Big brush stroke now so we can fill it all in nice and quickly. So now's a good time again to maybe turn up the music, enjoy, play, I love this pink.
And so again, always remember you can, if you don't want um, a pink fish, you can do another color for your fish. So I've had classes where people do a purple fish. And instead of like the purple um, fins, they do like, uh, like green fins or yellow fins. one with adding different colors you might want to also add a little bit of white you don't have to rinse off your brush keep the pink on it and just maybe do a little bit of sweeping marks of white into the fish and so that way this fish also has like a multicolor quality that our other fish does just by adding in that little bit of white now we're going to add in these other colors on top of the fish here too so that will also help but I like the addition of the little bit of white if you have some and want to add some you don't have to maybe you just want that nice dark um, pink to stay on there if you add white and it's just too much uh, white you can always just pick up some more pink and that will go over top of it just fine And again, you don't have to put the white everywhere if you're going to do the white. You can put maybe just a little bit down by the fins, maybe just a little bit up by the head, or, or put it everywhere. You might also like to add maybe a little bit of red. Red would be cool since we're working with red and white, but just a little bit on your brush, like how we did on the other side, just a tad bit of red. I like that. And again, you don't have to put the, the red in if you don't like. Or if you add it and it's just a little bit too much, you can add some more what? Pink. I love just playing and trying new things. That's what makes painting fun for me. Right. So take your time in finishing up as much of the colors that you'd like to add to the body of your fish. Maybe you want to add some more red, more white, more pink, or uh, something else in there. But once you're done with um, finishing up the, the body of your fish and it's color-wise, not including the purple yet, then you're ready for the next step. So if you're still working on your fish, hit pause now, and then when you're ready, hit play, come and join me for the next step. So if you are ready for the next step, we are going to start working on purple to make our fins. So for purple, you don't have to rinse off your, your brush if you ended with the pink and the red because purple involves red and what? Blue. So. On your, your palette, if you will mix just a, a little bit of blue to a little bit of red and add a little bit of white, that'll create the lavender color to start to come out. So if however dark or light your purple you, you want, you add more or less white. But for the red and blue, you're going to add equal amounts. If it ends up looking a little bit too red, add a little bit more blue. 
Sometimes we don't put equal amounts and it can create a little bit of a, a different color. Once you finish making your, your purple, then we're going to get our detail brush out. So whatever is your smallest brush, that's going to be the, um, the brush that we'll work with next. So just using that medium brush just to be able to make our purple. And then leaving that in our cup of water, getting our detail brush ready. So our fins are in the same shape that we did on the other side, except they're more right beside each other on either side. Here the body was like twisted, so the arms, the fins were a little bit like higher and lower. But for this fish, he's a little bit more on equal on the same side. Okay. So I have my smallest brush, so whatever is your smallest brush at home, please use that. And we're going to dip it into the purple. We're going to come off um, first on the right hand side. Okay. And about medium way on the body up here. And we're going to do a nice little curve out and down. Like how we did with this fish. And then coming down a little bit lower from the body. So we can curve out and down to connect to that point. Okay, and then we want to fill that in. Cool. Let's go to the next one. So our fin is coming across and it's the, uh, pretty much on the same side on the other side of the body. And we are curving out and down. Okay. Coming a little bit lower. Curving out and down. And connecting it to that other line. Create our fin and filling her in again. It's okay if one of your fins is bigger than the other. Even on our painting over here, the fin on the right is slightly bigger than the fin on the left. Fish are coming along. Let's get this little zigzag mark. Once we have, since we have purple on our brush, let's get this little zigzag mark and some dots um, in the center of our fish. So still with your purple and still with your smaller brush, in the central portion of your fish, you're going to start to make a nice little zigzag line, as if it's going down the spine of the fish. And it's going down towards the fin, but it's not going all the way down to the bottom of the fin. And it's not all the way up at the top of the head, but just above the fin level. Okay, let's add some dots. So on either side of the fin, I'm sorry, either side of that line, that curvy line, we're going to put some dots in wherever there's a curve. So where there's a, a curve here, a dot is there. And on the other side, there's a curve here. So there's a dot there. Dot, dot, dot. Just by touching the canvas with your um, small brush, you can get that dot in. And if you don't have a small brush, with whatever brush you have, if you can use the back side of your brush, that can also create a nice dot too. Okay. And now we're going to come down towards our fin area. And we're going to create a bunch of little dots all along the bottom of the fin. Okay. And then we're going to create
create lines that are just going down towards those dots. They don't have to be too long or too short, and they don't have to go to every dot. They're just lines that are coming down off of the, the fin towards the dots. And I'll bring my canvas up to you in just a second so you can see it better. Looking good. So hopefully you can see here how our dots are in the curved part of the line, dots along the bottom, lines above. And now you don't have to rinse off your brush, but now we're going to put little dots and lines over our purple marks with white. So just keep the purple on your brush, that's okay. Get some white on your brush. And now put white dots in the purple dots. And a white line over top of your purple line. Yeah. And same thing on the bottom. So we're not trying to fully cover the, the purple. We're just trying to create some more colors in the fish by adding white with the purple. So a little white over top of the white dots, a little white over top or near the purple lines on the bottom. Okay, like so. And then we're gonna come to our fins we're going to create three lines on, on each fin. So with that white, one, two, three. And on the right hand side, one, two, three. Looking good. All right, let's come back to the fish on the left. So take your time if you're still doing the um, marks on the fish on the right. Hit pause if you want to take your time and maybe add some more designs on the fish um, that I didn't do, or add more colors to your dots and lines that I didn't do. Remember, it's all about having fun and being playful. But when you're done and you're ready to come over to the left fish to doing those lines and dots, then come press play and join me again. So I'm gonna head in that direction with still the smallest brush, and we're going to be working with white and yellow. So that same white and yellow that we did with our fins, you can go back to that which you made. So filling up your detail brush with that white and yellow, or if you don't have any more, just remember to add a little bit of white to a little bit of yellow. We're going to make that zigzag mark down the center like we did on the right. So starting at the center of the body, nice big zigzag mark. If you lose your paint along the way and you need more, just fill it up. Yeah. Now on the fish on this side, we're going to add dots all over. So not just in the center, but we're going to add the dots all over the fish. So again, you can use the back side of your brush, or um, if the back side of your brush doesn't do it very well, if you have Q-tips at home, Q-tips work great. And then we're gonna make some lines at the bottom of our fin here, just like how we did on the other fish. Still the same with that yellow and white mixture. Good. Now we didn't put dots on, on this side like how we did on the bottom of this one, but if you want to add those or any other things, you can. But like how we did with that side, we're going to add white over top of all of this. So don't rinse off your brush. Just dip it into the white. And then go over top of your, your yellow line with a, another little white line. We don't want to 
take away the yellow line, you just want to add some more of another color in. And then a little white dot over top of your um, yellow dots. So when we say that we're just trying to add some more colors in, maybe instead of doing little white dots, maybe you want to do little red dots or orange dots or some other color. I hope you're having fun and being playful. Cool. Now I didn't do it on this side, but just to show you even I can do something different. I'm going to put three little lines on the fins on my, on my left hand fish. I'm going to do that with the white. So one, two, three. And on the other side, one, two, three. Yeah, cool. I like it. So I think our fish are, are dry enough to start to put in our eyes. So you want to make sure that your pink and your orange at the top here are dry. Because when we make our eyes with the white and the black, we don't want other colors to mix in with them. We're going to still use our smallest uh, of our uh, brushes, but make sure you rinse it out um, to make sure that we don't have any yellow or other colors on it, just the white we, we want on our brush. So I'm going to start on the right hand side pink fish, creating with my detail brush, filling it up with white, two circular uh, eyes on the top of my fish. Now one is the eyes are partly on the fish and partly off the fish. So as you can see here, partly on the fish and partly sticking out of the fish. Okay. So I will show you here. Oh yeah, looking like eyes. But watch when you're painting them. If your lines and your decoration on your fish are a little bit wet, watch your hand. You don't want to press on it and smudge it any. Once you make those eyes half on, half off, then fill them in with the white, please. circles for your eyes. Like I see, I, I smudged a little bit here. 
um, some weight on my fish. So I'm just going to cover that real quickly. And so if that ever happens to you that you smudge um, paint, don't worry about it. Um, it happens even for me as a teacher. And so you'll just take whatever um, color uh, that goes over top of that, that smudge to blend it back into your fish or to your water. Closer to you so you can see the circular dots for the eyes on either side, half on the fish, half off the fish. Okay, so we're going to let those dry before we put the black dots in the center. And while we have white on our brush, we're going to put in a little bit of some water motions in the water around our fish. So these are just little white lines that are moving in the water in accordance to the shape of the fish. Okay. So you just want white on your brush. And then in the water between your fishes here, you can just add some white lines that are moving in accordance to the shape of your fish there. And even on this side of your fish on the right, you can add in some little white lines. Okay. They're just white lines in the water, moving with the curve of the fish, just showing um, to us that the fish is moving and that the water is moving with, with the fish. So you can add those little white lines in the water around your fish, if you'd like, as many as you'd like. I find I like to do less than more. So I'm just gonna add just a couple more around my fish. Maybe one right here. And then maybe one over here. Maybe a couple down here. Maybe one over here. Yeah, I like it. So add as much as you'd like. Just move with the curve of wherever that the fish is. So if my fish is curving in here, my white in the water is curving in there. Okay. All right. We're going to start to move into doing our seaweed. We're going to come back to our medium brush and we're going to make some green. So please rinse off your medium brush. If you need some time to work on some other things, please press pause and come join me when you're ready. So remember to tap your brush in the bottom of your cup to get all of that paint out of your medium brush. So whatever brush you have at home that is closest to that size, will be what we'll use. And let's make some green, which is yellow and blue. So on your palette, you're gonna to start to mix yellow and blue. If you want your, your seaweed to be more yellow, um, I'm sorry, lighter in color, you're gonna add more yellow. If you want your seaweed to be darker in color, you're gonna add more, what? Blue. So, First start off with equal amounts of yellow and blue and mix those together. From there, you can choose to add more yellow if you want your seaweed to be lighter or more blue if you want your seaweed to be darker. You can also add, if you want, a little bit of white, and that can make it limey, like a lime color. So more white and more yellow will create a lime color. More yellow will create a lighter, more blue, a darker. All right, 
So we're going to start with using short brush stroke, least amount of bristles in one direction. And we're going to get our wavy seaweed. Let's start on the bottom left hand corner. We have this little sprig that's coming out. And so we're using that short brush stroke, just wiggling a line of seaweed coming out and wiggling some lines off of that line of seaweed to create like a, an aquatic grass look. So you can add as many or as little as you like down there. I'll bring that up so you can see that. So just lines and lines off of lines, but really like wiggly and curly like seaweed. So not bone straight. Okay. Let's come off of the left hand side here and make a little bit of some wiggly seaweed. And then let's come off the top left hand corner. Wiggling out some seaweed. Remember, make some lines, wiggling off of some lines to really get that flowy seaweed look. Let's bring some seaweed off of the top. And you can go all the way across the top as you're wiggling your seaweed coming down. And they can come nice and low. They can come near your um, pink fish. And remember to have little lines coming off of your lines. All lines are wiggly lines. Make them as long or as short as you would like. How's everybody doing? Remember, if you're, if you're having a hard time, just pause for a second. And just play around. If, you're, if your marks are becoming too thick, then um, if you have a smaller brush, you can use a, a smaller brush. You know, I haven't seen The Little Mermaid in a while, but I feel like watching The Little Mermaid would be really fun <laughs> while doing this. <laughs> okay, so we have some seaweed now on these corners. And let's bring some up on the bottom right hand side too. So we're coming all over with our seaweed. as you like. Again, I've had classes where some people only put a little bit in, and I have some people where they have their seaweed like crawling over top of their fish. Like the, the seaweed, their, the fish are like swimming through the seaweed so much that the seaweed is even being painted over top of the fish. So again, never think that something is right or wrong. Um, it's always just having fun and playing around with our, our paint. Okay. So once you've finished with your, um, your seaweed, you can leave your big brush 
in your cup of water and or if that is your smallest brush you'll keep it we're all going to go to our smallest brush because the last uh, part of our painting today is to put the black circle in the center of our our eyes here so it's a circle inside of our white circle but with the black so with your detail brush filling it up with black and start making those circles in the center of your eyes. Ooh, my eyes are starting to open up. Nice. Looking good. in classes we're, we're here for almost two hours in class and that two hours like how what we started off class talking about we, we take time and and oftentimes are, are pausing and getting up and stretching our legs or we're walking around and seeing what other people are doing or maybe we need some help or it's taking us a little bit longer to do something so that the extra time we take into a class that we do here for, for pausing and, and doing those things and taking our time. Now, today we went um, a little bit quicker, but hopefully at home you paused when you needed to, to pause. And now that we're towards the end of class here, there are some things that um, I can recommend uh, that if you still want to paint and enjoy playing, remember it's all about playing, that you can add in different uh, colors or different things to your, your um, canvas that you may want to add. Maybe you want to add bubbles coming out of the fish. I think bubbles can be pretty cool. Um, I wish I had bubbles to play with right now then. Or maybe you want to add some, uh, a different color on top of your seaweed. Maybe you want to do maybe a, a yellow on top of your, your seaweed or a darker green on top of your, your seaweed. But uh, otherwise, if you're feeling good about your, your painting, um, you are at signature time. So at the bottom of your, your painting, you can choose to do your initials, your signature, or today's date. At the most people will do it in the bottom left or the bottom right hand corner or you can sign it on the back of your canvas okay so those are all great areas to do so I also want to end class today with saying thank you so much for, for joining us I know during this time um, we may feel um, a little bit bored or lonely and want to hang out with people or do things. So hopefully this was an opportunity for you to um, do some fun painting and beyond this painting, uh, check out some more of our virtual classes. We have one other painting that is of a whale's tail. Maybe you've already done it. Um, but uh, if you haven't, maybe check that on for another painting to do. Otherwise, just have fun with painting. If you have more things that you can uh, uh, paint on, like a canvas or something, and you have more paint, just have fun playing around. That's the biggest thing I always encourage, and I hope that you got out of class today, which is to have fun and to play. So, so important. So again, my name is Nikki. Um, I've been your instructor today, and hopefully you can come back and join me in a class here at Splash once we're all back uh, open and safe to be um, with each other again. Otherwise, I'm going to end today by bringing this painting up close to you so you can look at it a little bit longer if you need to. 
And you can also pause your screen here, so that way you can um, maybe reference it as you're making any of your final adjustments today. Take care, everybody. Bye.